the Maritime Labor Convention of the International Labor Organization came into force on 20 August 2013. What a basic aim of the MLC 2006. To ensure comprehensive worldwide protection of the rights of seafarers. MLC is sometimes called the Seafarers Bill of Rights. To establish a platform for countries and shipowners committed to providing decent working and living conditions for seafarers, protecting them from unfair competition on the part of substandard ships. Applicable, ships of 500 GT or over, engaged in international voyages. Its validity is five years. Maritime labor certificate which will be issued by the flag state after an inspection by the flag state or an recognized organization which confirms compliance with minimum standards. Flow chart of MLC. Firstly flag state ratifies maritime labor convention and incorporate in its national law. After that flag state issue DMLC part 1. Then company prepares procedure and comply as per DMLC part 1 and MLC. Then administration or recognized. Organizations on behalf of administration review DMLC part 2 against DMLC part 1. And administration or recognized organization on behalf of administration surveys ship for checking physical arrangements, under Title 3 physical arrangements, accommodation, recreational facilities, food and catering. When review of DMLC Part 2 and survey, audit of ship has been done and accepted, administration or recognized organization on behalf of administration issues of MLC certificate. When can an interim maritime labor certificate be issued? A flag state need not issue interim certificates, but sets out the situations when this would be allowed, namely to new ships on delivery, when a ship changes flag, or when a shipowner assumes responsibility for the operation of a ship which is new to that shipowner. Interim Maritime Labor Certificate, who issues and its validity. An interim maritime labor certificate may be issued once to a ship for a period not exceeding six months by the competent authority or a recognized organization duly authorized for this purpose. Certification required under MLC 2006. The MLC requires that each ship over 500 GT is issued with a maritime labor certificate. Declaration of Maritime Labor Compliance Part 1, DMLC Part 1, is to be prepared and issued by the Flag State Administration and contains the national requirements and applicable exemptions. DMLC Part 2. Shipowner completes DMLC Part 2. DMLC Part 2 sets out points by which standards of DMLC Part 1 can be met. It outlines what the ship owner needs to do to meet the national requirements, the 14 items listed in Appendix A 5.1 of the MLC, 2006. It shows the measures suggested ensuring that improvement continues. Must be written in clear terms. Is designed to help everyone involved to easily check that the requirements are being put in place properly. Purpose, scope and benefits of applying the MLC are to Set minimum requirements for seafarers to work on a ship. Address conditions of employment, accommodation, recreational facilities, food and catering, health protection, medical care, welfare and social security protection. Prevent substandard working and living conditions and ensure the best environment for the onboard personnel. Create a platform for support the fair treatment of all seafarers. Maritime Labor Convention. The convention comprises three different but related parts. The articles, the regulations and the code. The articles and regulations set out the core rights and principles and the basic obligations of members ratifying the convention. The code contains the details for the implementation of the regulations. It comprises Part A, mandatory standards and Part B, non-mandatory guidelines. What are the subjects of the titles? Title 1. Minimum requirements for seafarers to work on a ship. Title 2. Conditions of employment. Title 3. Accommodation, recreational facilities, food and catering. Title 4. Health protection, medical care, welfare and social security protection. Title 5. Compliance and enforcement. Title 1. Minimum requirements for seafarers to work on a ship. Regulation 1.1 Minimum Age. Regulation 1.2 Medical Certificate. Regulation 1.3 Training and Qualifications. Regulation 1.4 Recruitment and Placement. Title 2. Conditions of Employment. Regulation 2.1 Seafarers Employment Agreements. 
Regulation 2.2 Wages Regulation 2.3 Hours of Work and Hours of Rest Regulation 2.4 Entitlement to Leave Regulation 2.5 Repatriation Regulation 2.6 Seafarer Compensation for the Ship's Loss or Foundering Regulation 2.7 Manning Levels Regulation 2.8 Career and Skill Development and Opportunities for Seafarers Employment Title 3 Accommodation Recreational Facilities Food and Catering Regulation 3.1 Accommodation and Recreational Facilities Regulation 3.2 Food and Catering Title 4 Health Protection Medical Care Welfare and Social Security Protection Regulation 4.1 Medical Care on Board Ship and Ashore Regulation 4.2 Ship Owners Liability Regulation 4.3 Health and Safety Protection and Accident Prevention Regulation 4.4 Access to Shore-Based Welfare Facilities Regulation 4.5 Social Security Title 5 Compliance and Enforcement Regulation 5.1 Flag State Responsibilities Regulation 5.1.1 General Principles Regulation 5.1.2 Authorization of Recognized Organizations Regulation 5.1.3 Maritime Labor Certificate and Declaration of Maritime Labor Compliance Regulation 5.1.4 Inspection and Enforcement Regulation 5.1.5 Onboard Complaint Procedures Regulation 5.1.6 Marine Casualties Regulation 5.2 Port State Responsibilities Regulation 5.2.1 Inspections in Port Regulation 5.2.2 Onshore Seafarer Complaint Handling Procedures Regulation 5.3 Labor Supplying Responsibilities Work Rest Hour Requirements as per MLC The limits on hours of work or rest shall be as follows A. Maximum hours of work shall not exceed 1. 14 hours in any 24-hour period and 2. 72 hours in any 7-day period or b. Minimum hours of rest shall not be less than 1. 10 hours in any 24-hour period, and 2. 77 hours in any 7-day period. Hours of rest may be divided into no more than 2 periods, one of which shall be at least 6 hours in length, and the interval between consecutive periods of rest shall not exceed 14 hours. Musters firefighting and lifeboat drills, and drills prescribed by national laws and regulations and by international instruments, shall be conducted in a manner that minimizes the disturbance of rest periods and does not induce fatigue. When a seafarer is on call, such as when a machinery space is unattended, the seafarer shall have an adequate compensatory rest period if the normal period of rest is disturbed by call-outs to work. Things to be included in seafarers' employment agreements as per MLC 2006. Seafarers' employment agreements shall in all cases contain the following particulars. A. Seafarers' full name, date of birth or age, and birthplace. B. Shipowner's name and address. C. Place where and date when the seafarers' employment agreement is entered into. D. Capacity in which the seafarer is to be employed. E. Amount of the seafarers' wages or, where applicable, the formula used for calculating them. F. Amount of paid annual leave or, where applicable, the formula used for calculating it. G. Termination of the agreement and the conditions thereof, including. 1. If the agreement has been made for an indefinite period, the conditions entitling either party to terminate it, as well as the required notice period, which shall not be less for the shipowner than for the seafarer. 2. If the agreement has been made for a definite period, the date fixed for its expiry, and. 3. If the agreement has been made for a voyage, the port of destination and the time which has to expire after arrival before the seafarer should be discharged. H. Health and social security protection benefits to be provided to the seafarer by the shipowner. I. Seafarer's entitlement to repatriation. J. Reference to the collective bargaining agreement, if applicable, and K. Any other particulars which national law may require. When would a maritime labor certificate cease to be valid? Certificate would cease to be valid, namely, if the relevant inspections are not completed within the periods prescribed by the MLC, 2006. If the certificate is not endorsed following an intermediate inspection. When a ship changes flag. 
when a ship owner ceases to assume the responsibility for the operation of a ship, and when substantial changes have been made to the structure or equipment covered in Title III of the MLC, 2006. What is the list of 14 areas to be certified for issuing a maritime labor certificates? Below list of matters that must be inspected and found to meet national laws and regulations or other measures. 1. Minimum age. 2. Medical certification. 3. Qualifications of seafarers. 4. Seafarers employment agreements. 5. Use of any licensed or certified or regulated private recruitment and placement service. 6. Hours of work or rest. 7. Manning levels for the ship. 8. Accommodation. 9. Onboard recreational facilities. 10. Food and catering. 11. Health and safety and accident. Prevention. 12. Onboard medical care. 13. Onboard complaint procedures. 14. Payment of wages. As per amendments of 2014, enter into force from January 2017, two more areas will be added to this list. 15. Financial security for repatriation. 16. Financial security for shipowners liability. Who is protected by the MLC 2006? MLC 2006 applies to seafarers, as defined. All persons who are employed or are engaged or work in any capacity on board a ship to which the convention applies, including cadet also. This definition includes not just the crew involved in navigating or operating the ship but also, for example, hotel personnel working on the ship. On cruise ship, below all are covered under MLC, it covers all workers including cabin and cleaning personnel, bar staff, waiters, entertainers, singers, kitchen staff, casino personnel and aestheticians. Who is the ship owner under the MLC 2006? The MLC 2006 defines a ship owner as the owner of the ship or another organization or person, such as the manager, agent or bare boat charterer, who has assumed the responsibility for the operation of the ship from the owner and who, on assuming such responsibility, has agreed to take over the duties and responsibilities imposed on ship owners in accordance with the convention. MLC 2006 applies to all ships, whether publicly or privately owned, that are ordinarily engaged in commercial activities except ships engaged in fishing or in similar pursuits, ships of traditional build, such as dows and junks, warships or naval auxiliaries. MLC 2006 recognizes that there may be situations where there is doubt as to whether it applies to a ship or particular category of ships. In the event of doubt, the national competent authority must make a determination on the question after consultation with the shipowners and seafarers organizations concerned. Amendments to MLC 2018 Amendments to the MLC 2006 came into force on 26 December 2020. By aiming to provide employment certainty and financial protection when seafarers are prevented from fulfilling their contractual duties whilst being held captive on or off the ship as a result of acts of piracy or armed robbery against ships. The amendment provides that seafarers' contracts will remain in effect while they are held captive. This is regardless of whether the seafarers' employment contract has expired or whether a party to the contract has given notice to suspend or terminate it. Seafarers' wages and other entitlements under employment contracts Collective bargaining agreements or applicable national laws will continue to be payable during the entire period of captivity and until the seafarer is released and duly repatriated or, in the event of death in captivity, until the date of death or the date of presumed death. Right to repatriation will not be lost even if not claimed within a reasonable time, in circumstances where the seafarers are being held captive. Special tripartite meeting of the MLC 2006 from 5 to the 13th of May 2022. If approved they should enter into force by December 2024. The amendments they agreed will ensure that seafarers have appropriately sized personal protective equipment, in particular to suit the increasing number of women seafarers. Good quality drinking water is available free of charge for seafarers. States further facilitate the prompt repatriation of abandoned seafarers. States provide medical care for seafarers in need of immediate assistance and facilitate the repatriation of the remains of seafarers who have died on board.
Seafarers are provided with appropriate social connectivity by ship owners and states provide internet access in their ports. Seafarers are informed of their rights relating to the obligation of recruitment and placement services to compensate seafarers for monetary losses. All deaths of seafarers are recorded and reported annually to the ILO and the relevant data is published. Special Tripartite Committee adopted a number of resolutions related to bullying and harassment of seafarers, including sexual assault and sexual harassment. The financial security system to protect seafarers in cases of abandonment. The need to adopt measures to ensure that all seafarers have adequate means of contractual redress against ship owners. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe this video among your friends and colleagues. Join our Telegram channel for latest maritime updates and exams preparations.